allow uh, motion capture uh, uh, with a mobile uh, availability. So many of the uh, previous works make use of uh, motion sensors, such as IMU sensors. However, these sensors are very expensive, and usually they are sensitive to uh, electromagnetic uh, inter interference. And in contrast, body-worn uh, camera systems are more, um, much less expensive and more robust to the um, interference. And uh, several inside-out systems have been proposed, but uh, usually they uh, either suffer from very, uh, very complex computation, like this uh, kind of multi-camera system. They require a, a slam for each, uh, for each camera uh, mounted on the limb. Um, and uh, another example here is a mo monocular method. They only uh, need one single camera. But the problem is like um, the, the camera is front facing. They can only see the, the scene, not the body. So the accuracy of the post estimation is very, uh, is very low. And the closest related work to our method is the eagle cap system. Uh, basically, they use two hand mounted fisheye camera to look into the body. And that's why we call it uh, inside-in system. Um, but the problem with this system is actually they are quite bulky and very heavy. So basically, it's not very, um, very uh, pleasant experience to wear this kind of device. And th in this paper, uh, we propose a lightweight, uh, real-time, and a mobile system which can only rely on a single RGB camera. And uh, basically, we attach a fisheye camera uh, on top of uh, a, base, a baseball cap. And therefore, we convert the, uh, the baseball cap into a wearable motion capture device. So basically, um, the 100 degree uh, field of view of the fisheye camera can, uh, can cover the entire body, uh, even though the body is in a very extended pose. And comparing to the Eagle Cap system, we only use one single RGB camera. Um, and also, we put the camera much closer to the body. So um, the weight of the camera translates to a uh, very small uh, moment. Uh, therefore, the system is much, more, um, uh, much less intrusive and uh, much more practical to use it in your daily life. And actually, uh, our live, uh, live demo shows that the, the system runs at 60 FPS on a, a laptop. So having the hardware, uh, hardware design, our goal now is to estimate the 3D pose from the uh, images captured from the fisheye cameras. And apart from the, from the common challenges uh, of the monocular motion capture, um, there are several uh, specific uh, challenges which are, uh, which are specific to our particular uh, setup. For example, the first one is the um, this strong perspective, uh, uh, the strong radio distortion due to the fisheye camera. Basically, you can see in the center of the image, um, the object is less distor distorted, but uh, on the outside ring, uh, the image are more distorted. And the second challenge is the uh, strong perspective uh, distortion due to the proxi uh, proximity of the camera to the body. Um, therefore, you can see the upper body is very large in the image because they are closer to the camera. And the lower body is very small in the image because they are further. Um, and uh, basically, due to these challenges, um, the direct uh, regression of the 3D pose uh, does not work very well because the distortion effects are not uh, taken into particular uh, consideration. So in this work, we proposed um, a disentangled CNN architecture, which is uh, tailored to our specific uh, hardware design. So the idea is to decouple the 3D post estimation uh, problem into two sub-problems. And the first, one, uh, first uh, problem is the 2D um, joint detection problem. And the second one is to estimate the depth of each joint. And uh, there are several modules um, in our whole pipeline. So the first uh, uh, module is the 2D, uh, 2D joint detection uh, uh, module, uh, which uh, regress the 2D joint uh, heat map from the 2D images. And here we uh, use a fully connected network to regress the heat maps. 
and from the 2D heat map, we can read out the um, 2D joint location. And due to the strong perspec uh, pr perspective distortion we discussed before, uh, the lower body is very small in the image because they are usually very far from the camera. And therefore, we to, um, to improve the accuracy of the 2D detection of the lower body, uh, we propose the zoom in branch, which zoom in to the center of the uh, image. And yeah, and then we uh, detect the lower body at a higher resolution. And then we average the heat map from the two branches to get a uh, four body 2D de detection. And then we have a, a depth <laughs> module to estimate the distance between the camera and the each joint. And here we make use of fully connected layer to leverage the global information feature. And therefore we, bet we can better handle the uh, location dependent radio distortion. And in the end, we um, obtain the actual 3D uh, joint position using these uh, equations uh, uh, based on the um, 2D detection UV and the depths estimated from the, uh, from the second branch. Uh, and uh, we also use the calibration function of the fisheye camera. So this is uh, uh, our training, examples of our training data. To get, uh, generate this synthetic training data, we make use of the simple human model and uh, we animate it using the uh, CMU mocap data. And then we uh, render the image and uh, composite the image with the background images captured with our uh, feature cameras. And here we show the results. Here on the left side, we can see the 3D post estimation result uh, overlaid onto the image, uh, input images. And on the right side, we show the 3D view of the motion. Actually, you can see the result uh, is not only accurate in the uh, 2D overlay, but also quite accurate in the 3D, um, 3D view. And also, this is another example we captured outdoor. And you can see it's uh, equally uh, robust. And also, we compare our method to the existing method that um, directly regress the 3D pose from the images. And benefiting from the uh, disentangled approach, uh, our result can overlay onto the image very precisely compared to this uh, two um, methods which directly regress the 3D pose. And we also have the ablation study to show the um, influence of our zoom in branch. You can see that without zoom in, the overlay of the lower body is less accurate. And uh, with our zoom in branch, here you can see the lower body is uh, more accurately located because uh, we regress the lower body in a higher, uh, higher resolution. And also we uh, provide the uh, quantitative evaluation of the 3D pose uh, in terms of the, the, uh, the mean joint error. Um, the lower is better. And here we can see um, Comparing to the direct regression, our 3D post estimation result is also more accurate. And if you compare uh, our zoom in branch uh, uh, method, our four method, you can see the zoom in branch uh, further improve the results in, by a large margin, um, leading to the better performance in this comparison. Our real time mobile capture system allow us to capture the uh, uh, everyday activity. For example, here this is the uh, office scenario. You can see the interaction with other people uh, is also available. <coughs> and the system can be also used outdoor. Um, and due to the mobile uh, setting, you can move freely in your daily life and uh, while keeping, um, keeping capturing the motion. Uh, even w uh, when you are riding a bike. We can also use it to do more intensive uh, activity like uh, sports. So in conclusion, we proposed uh, a real-time mobile system for motion capture, which can be used to record your daily activity. Uh, we believe there are many uh, interesting applications for this system. For example, in VR and AR, it allows you to uh, interact with the uh, virtual environment uh, naturally with your, your, your full body. 
and uh, without any controller. And also you can use it for telepresence. And for the healthcare, it can be used for fall detection and sport training, etc. And the data captured from this uh, egocentric scenario can be used to train the robot to understand the scene and to, uh, to train the robot to behave like a human. And in the end, I would like to thank the co-authors and thank you for your attention. <laughs> and the, the data set is available here. <laughs> but, uh, I would like uh, to ask, I really like uh, the system also. Um, <clears throat> the Thank question you. that pops out to my mind uh, when you say uh, this could be used for uh, telepresence, how mm -hmm. precisely you would like to use the system? Have you talked in this direction? Um, actually, thanks for the question. Actually, um, from here we show an uh, example of the holo, holograph, uh, hologram actually, uh, holo partition. Actually, uh, if you use our system and uh, you I integrate this system into the um, headset, mm -hmm. then you can basically remove all the capturing devices because for this device, for this uh, method, they use uh, multiple uh, depth cameras surrounding surrounding the subject. So basically, so if I'm mm -hmm. a naive uh, a participant in your um, uh, system, mm -hmm. I'm just plugged into the reality that you have captured before. Do you mean this by telepresence? Uh, or you can do it in real time, like you can uh, communicate with other people in a very long distance. Or okay. Yeah. That's the, but that's then the how concept of the it telepresence. It is related with uh, what, uh, mm -hmm. what has been captured already. Uh, I mean, you can capture your motion in real time. And then you, for example, if you have your avatar, uh -huh. uh, then you can rig and animate your avatar so uh, other people can see you from a different place. Okay, okay. I hope. <laughs> I I'll catch you up later because, yeah. uh, thank you. Can we mm -hmm. have the next speaker come on up and begin to prepare? And can we make sure that we keep the back door clear so it can move away from the door? Uh, there might be, yeah, there are a few students up here, and they'll just move up the side. We want to keep the, uh, make sure the exits are clear. Um, I think we'll have to uh, put your question maybe, okay. maybe at the end of the session. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.